I cannot believe this room is full at 10 in the fucking morning. Yes, we like guns. I like guns too. That has to do with this talk. How many people carry a gun on a regular basis? Law enforcement, fed. No, you're probably just fucking, you know, citizens in a free country. So big, one big hand for friggin' still having some freedoms in this country. So really fast, I mean, Dallas went through it, and, you know, you guys, a lot of you bump into me, and I love seeing you every single year. Uh, yeah, who am I? I drink stuff, I sing really loud, I go to a lot of cons. If you've seen me at others, please, you know, just come over and say, hey, you didn't do that talk that time. Do this talk over here. That was fun. Come to our place. I'll probably show up. Who's going to Derby Con? Just, you know, coming up. Yes. The, all the new ones that keep coming out support the smaller cons. We get together for DEF CON every year. Big ones, small ones, everything in between. They're all wonderful and you should all go. Uh, I also like guns. I like really big guns. Let's be honest. I like, I like all guns. I'm not a discriminatory person with guns. I like guns and I like locks. So I said, hmm, sometimes those of us who have guns in our daily lives, it involves locks. You know, we have to lock up our guns. And we've talked a lot in the past about, you know, really nice locks. And what is a good lock? You know, I have abloy locks on this and that and the other, and I have this Sergeant and Greenleaf safe. But what about, like, shitty locks plus guns? Which is, you know, you'd think a bad idea. But a lot of us do involve, you know, really crappy locks in our gun culture in ways that are usually unintended, and that's what this talk is going to try to address. If you've ever, you know, looked through any firearm, you know, brochures about safety and, oh, guns must be stored carefully, you know, they'll, they'll tell you in almost every pamphlet, all gun storage devices that you buy, like right off the shelf, these are not, you know, safes, these are not security devices. These are, to, these are to prevent, you know, your toddler from NDing into the fucking carpet when you're not home. These, these are not to prevent thieves and criminals and even, I would say, curious teenagers. And if you understand that, and if you see why and how a lot of these things are made, with the quality that goes into them, you know, most of these are just shipped out for like a dollar. And they're get, how many people get a lock free when you buy a gun in your state, right? Do you think that's going to be a good lock? No, it's just trying to comply with some policy that a politician made. So, of course, it's going to be a, you know, cheap piece of shit. These little cable locks, like, I have, I don't even know how many of them. I threw the keys away long ago. We still use them, like, when we're driving through Jersey and stuff. We just kind of pick it open, put it around the gun, and, like, pick it when we get home, because whatever. Yeah, you know, come on, honey, I love you, but y your people don't make some of the best stuff. <laughs> yeah, these things, you know, you can really, <laughs> you can really blow through all these locks pretty efficiently and pretty quickly. Here we have a couple just, you know, basic off-the-shelf samples. And, you know, here's, here's a little knockoff, whatever, cable lock. Let's see. All right, go ahead and put the wrench in. We, we're going to have these in the village if you want to play with these or in the Q&A room. And, you know, you got to put your tools in. And Okay, oh, whoops, okay, sorry, that's open. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe a, a, like a toddler with no motor control couldn't do that. But I'm pretty sure a five-year-old could. I love my Mossberg shotguns. They ship with a genuine Mossberg lock. Um, the, you know, the Swedes do not put as much engineering into their locks as they do into their shotguns. This takes a little bit longer. I think this, this took about three seconds to pick. Most of these are first take videos that I just kind of knocked together really wobbly, so pardon the, the awful camera footage. Say, oh, let's see, can I get it? I don't know. I've got to rake it a couple more times. Maybe, no, I don't know if it's not going to open. Maybe it's too strong. No, I, I don't think that's a problem. That's open. So, yeah, the, these locks... They're fine if you want to just comply with the law. I'm, I'm down with complying with most gun laws. <laughs> that, you know, but understand their purpose. Understand what these are for. Understand that these are not high security devices by any stretch. Trigger locks. The little just, you know, I'm going to clamp it on. My very first DEF CON talk was way back, what was it, like DEF CON 13. How many people have been coming since 13? How many people have been coming since before 13? How many people is this your first DEF CON? What do you think so far? It's very cool. Yeah, we had one of these on stage, and we had, you know, like, I think Agent X and Priest verifying that we weren't going to blow anything up on stage. Let me see if we have some footage. Ooh, PowerPoint slowdown. So, yeah, one of the first, like, bypass tools I kind of made my own, you know, stuff, I made out of, like, a piece of long fish tape wire and just made a hook. Almost all of these locks, these little two-sided, clamp-it-on, snap-it-in trigger locks, they are just a little set of teeth. 
And those teeth have to engage with one side and the other side. Maybe, maybe going to play? Well, I'll just keep talking and hopefully it starts playing. Those little teeth just engage with one another on each side with like a spring-loaded mechanism. So one spring-loaded set of teeth, another spring-loaded set of teeth. Come on, you son of a bitch. Let's try it one more time. And if not, fuck it, it's really a boring video. It's just me shoving a giant hook. There we go. Just shoving a giant hook in, finding the spring-loaded teeth and pulling. I'm pretty sure that somebody put a video online of like a 10-year-old kid doing this. Um, I, I hope it was a responsible kid. You don't want to just say, here, I'm going to teach you something just for this video, but don't ever do it again. <laughs> so yeah, one half of the lock, other half of the lock, and it just kind of snaps in, finds its little sweet spot, center it down a little more, try to get it to snap in. If you've ever used one of these, I mean, they're really sloppy. They, they don't really hold very well. You could still just pull on them half the time and just charge around. But here is my, here's my special tool made for, you know, seven cents and a broken piece of fish tape. Oh, where's the springs? There's the springs. Blanc. Yeah. Again, fine product if you want to just comply with some, you know, Massachusetts politician. Not a great thing if, you know, you're doing prisoner transport and you're going to put this pistol next to the lock. And, oh, he can't get my guns. Don't, uh, nobody's dumb enough to do that, right? Okay. I don't know. There could be, like, TSA in the audience. Those are, those are pretty dumb law enforcement folk. We're not talking, though, about little trigger guards for them. We're not talking about, in this talk, little things that kind of just bolt onto the gun. We're talking about enclosures that you put your gun in. Cabinets, lock boxes, etc. Uh, some cabinets are pretty crappy. If you look really closely, I mean, how many people have been in the lockpick village or any of our lockpick trainings? What kind of lock is this? Wafer lock. Is a wafer lock a very good lock? No, it is not. It's a filing cabinet lock. So yeah, some things, they're just awful. Some things are nice. You know, this is a proper gun safe. This is, you know, a big wheel, dial it in. Some of them use electronic keypads, but either or, you know, however fancy you get them, you can look and see if you have a nice lock. Anybody tell me what this little S and G logo, who is that? Sergeant and Greenleaf. Whether you have a big dial lock, oftentimes you're going to see that name, the S and G logo around. That's a nice safe. That is also not really the topic of this talk. We're not talking about good big gun safes. I'm talking about the ones that you just spot in, you know, sporting goods stores. Things that you're like, oh, I've got a, you know, a daily carry. I, you know, I come home at the end of the day, take my gun off, go over to the bookshelf, boop, 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 open something up, drop it in. Those kind of lock boxes are what we are going to focus on right now. And they are a whole lot of fun. This is not one of those, by the way. This is a sentry safe. This is a fire safe. Does anybody have any idea whether or not this is a very robust mechanism? No, no it is not. I, I, yes, yeah, somebody said screwdriver, someone else said jiggler. I have seen people use these to like lock up their daily carry gun at the end of the day. I don't know why. I wouldn't recommend it. A lot of these products that I saw in this one aisle, because I was just walking through Cabela's one day, they were so, like, I bought a bunch of stuff, and we're going to play with a bunch of stuff. Some of these were so bad, I just didn't, you know, take them. I was like, all right, I can, I can make some fucking footage of that right here. The secure it. Oh, okay. Let's see how, what kind of lock is this? Wafer lock. Yeah, that, that was open pretty easily right there. I'm like, no, I don't, no, I don't need any help. I don't think I'm going to buy this one. Thank you. <laughs> but let's talk about some really nice, you know, nicer. Let's talk about some mid-range, you know, you're not going to just buy it in a, in a crappy Kmart kind of, kind of safes. Uh, I really want to give a big hand to a guy, uh, the guy who runs Center of Mass, he actually saw a lecture of mine, and he said, oh, man, I saw that tubular lock thing, and it really freaked me out because some of my products use that. Uh, can I, like, can you evaluate some? And I was like, well, I guess I could. Do you want to talk to the manufacturer? He's like, yeah. So I talked to the manufacturer. Uh, they're not interested at all in having these evaluated. <laughs> so you can't have them for free, like, from them, but I'll just, I'll send them to you at cost. So he was a really awesome guy. I'm not, I don't like to, you know, shill for anybody, but, you know, Center of Mass gave me these for pretty damn cheap, so I, I love those guys for that. This is one that he gave me. He gave me the MicroVault. We're going to look at three of their most popular products. MicroVault, you know, it's a nice little device. It's got little, you know, keypads with the fingers. You punch in a code, the idea you can feel where your fingers are, like if it's under a desk, if you're doing the bail bondsman thing, where you're like, pa, I got the gun, and you didn't see it. it. Says right in the manual, ooh, guns are bad, guns are dangerous, they can kill people, and this is not a security device. That's pretty true. Because why? In addition to the bio, you know, fingerprinty thing, it's not a fingerprint reader, it's just a finger pad, 
It also has a lock. Almost all these safes have lock override, you know, mechanical locks. What kind of lock is that? Tubular lock. Is tubular lock really great lock? Not, not exactly, no. Maybe it's better than a wafer lock, but it's not much better. So here we are, we're saying, all right, here's our tubular lock. Let's see what we can do with this. Whoops. Okay, that took a little longer than the, uh, you know, Mossberg cable, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, always clear and make safe. If anyone wants to try this, we're gonna let you try some of this. And yeah, in the next frame, I do rack out the round of the other H and K, so I'm not being irresponsible. But yeah, tu tubular pick. Has anyone tried tubular picking? Does anyone want to try tubular picking? All right, I see some hands in the front. We're gonna manage this the best we can. Tubular picking is really neat. We have tubular picks that you can play with or pick up from us in the village and in the vendor area with tool. If you've never tried it, it's, it is that simple. And some of our folk are going to help you out. Sort of orderly, just, just try to come up here. If you want to like kneel down in the front, you can try a tubular pick on the micro vault right here. If you want to give it a whirl, it's really simple. We'll show you how to use the tool. Or don't crowd all around. We'll come play in the village later. We've got a lot of these. If you do, hopefully this doesn't fuck the crowd up, if you do come and try to open any of our locks, there are rewards inside of all these gun safes this morning. So, so I would encourage you to, you know, be a little bit bold. What's up, Marfet? <laughs> hey, man. So, yeah, just, just orderly on the side over there, and we'll see who gets some free drinks or free snacks. There are other things inside of this, you know, case. Once I opened it up, I started to poke around and see what else was going on. I wanted to see beyond that mechanism. I said, oh, there is a ribbon cable. I wonder if I can try to tap into that and do funny things. No, it's just, you know, it's four wires and a ground. It's the four buttons. The mechanism that actually locks all this up, the electronic, you know, the, the triggered mechanism, is pretty weak, but I was not able to, like, bump slam it open. I'll show you some more footage here. It's a little, you know, spring-loaded clip and the, the rear piece just has to be pulled down. So here's the actual mechanism. Just there, it's latched. Doesn't want to move. There's a little bar in the back that gets pulled down by the tailpiece, and that releases it. You'll see it from another angle here. So there, now it's okay. You can, of course, try to reach in and stick something in, and I tried to find all kind of little crevices and cracks, trying to find a way to slip a tool into it when it's locked, just to hit that override bar in the back. Wasn't really able to do that successfully. I mean, this is, obviously, it's, it's sheet metal. You could bend the fuck out of it. But if you're going to bend it all up, like, just break it open and take the guns that way, you're not going to easily just covertly stick, let's say, a paper clip in there and trigger that. But can everybody see the tailpiece? It's, it's a pretty simple mechanism, just making that release. So I started trying to say, well, if I can't do that, can I mess with any of the controls? Can I, like, turn off, you know, can I enroll new users? Can I delete the, the user database and blank it out so it just starts opening? And I tried to reach in and hit those buttons. I tried it with beer can metal. I tried all kind of shims. I wasn't able to do any of that. I just kept crumpling it up. I thought maybe, you know, these little sensors on the side, it detects when it's shut because you shouldn't be able to program a safe when it's shut, right? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, no, those are just little spring-loaded, you know, there's a cable here, but that's not it. This is a little spring just helping the lid to pop open. So those aren't like reed switches. But even so, I wasn't able to, to get my shims in. I just bent them all up, and I made a lot of forensic evidence when I tried. So if you have one of these safes and you suddenly get a whole bunch of scratches near one of your buttons, I don't know, maybe I was in your house trying to fuck around and, and take your 1911. But overall, you know, not a bad safe. Like, the, the, the overall design is kind of sound. I like that it, it relies on something keyable, but it's not, I don't really like biometrics a lot. I think biometrics in the heat of the moment are some, I don't want to have grime or blood or I don't know what is going on in my house when I need to grab my guns, but my fingerprints might not be clearly readable. So I like this mechanism. I, I don't like that it's a tubular lock, but all in all, as you'll see, it's certainly not the worst thing on the market. Let's talk about the worst thing on the market. <laughs> This is a bio box. This is also available, you know, from a lot of suppliers. It's available in some shops. What kind of locks on this? Well, yeah, it's a little bio fingerprint reader, but there's also a tubular lock. Do you think it's a good tubular lock? 
No? Maybe. Some people say yes, some people say no. Well, you know, they do promise quick and easy access with the touch of one finger. That's about the only pressure you really need on the tubular lock pick when you try this. Have we gotten any uh, open over there, by the way? Anybody? Yeah, has this been opened? Half the people have opened it. You've got to say open, but apparently half the people have opened this right now. Have they been taking booze or granola bars? Booze. Booze, yeah. Can we get uh, the people who got registered to come up? Yeah. The people who enrolled your fingerprint earlier successfully, can we have you back up on Fabulous's side of the stage? Because she is going to start doing some cool things with dental alginate. And uh, yeah, it looks all sexy vinyl clubbish, but we're really just going to copy your digits. Not the call you digits, but like the I'm going to be, be you at a crime scene digit. But more about the bio box. You know, nice little case, I guess, bent sheet metal. Their design is crappier in a number of ways, though, that we're going to explore. Not the least of which is the fact that they glue their, like, instruction pad to the foam. So the moment you buy it and you say, all right, I don't need this friggin' piece of crap label inside the lock, you rip it up, it just tears the foam all apart. It's just dumb design, but whatever. Maybe the people they think who are going to own it are too dumb to, like, remember the instructions so that you're not supposed to remove those, I guess. But we have our friend the tubular pick, if you want to give that a try. I don't know if we have the bio box because it's just that bad. As you'll see, you know, I, I went to like set up the video. I said, all right, I'm going to try to see if I can open this. Let me get the pick in, and it should just kind of, I guess if I, whoops, fuck. So that's open. But in general, that's not half the ways that, the, that this product is kind of funny. And of course, you guys know with tubular picking, you copy the key. So you do this once, open, we got another one open. We're running out of booze, damn, we only have granola bars left. So yeah, in addition to that, anybody know Converge? Alex Rogan, Medic, some of, the, some of the goons around DEF CON? Big hand, by the way, for all the goons that have been fucking, they stay drunk so you don't have to and be safe. <laughs> yeah, so Con and those guys, they were, they were at Alex's house down in Texas around the new year, and he had just gotten a new, you know, he just gotten a new gun locker, he got in a bio box. And they're like, oh man. Let, open! <laughs> nice. We are now, that's a Jägermeister. Wow, you are starting early, sir. <laughs> so, you know, they were, they're like, all right, I wonder if we can, we can play with this. Man, I wonder what we could do. So they just started taking, you know, bent pieces of metal. They just started taking, you know, paper clips, lock picks, etc. Because you see the button to it. Did you just see where I use the enroll button? It's like right under the lip. Now, there are a lot of holes in the side of this case. I don't know why they're there. All right, my finger has been enrolled. There are holes right along the edges that you could, let's say, stick a lockpick into. Let's see what happens if you do that. So we've got to feel around for the right place. Open. <laughs> All right, I can enroll a new finger with it shut. Fuck you, boom. <laughs> All right, so that works. And then the same question that the, the guys had in Texas, they were like, man, I, if I can enroll myself, I wonder if I can like delete myself. I said, all right, let's try this one with a paper clip because maybe you don't have lock picks. Maybe you haven't gone to the village. All right, take our, our, our super elite hacksaw, open the CD-ROM to drawer tool. All right, where is it? Open again down there. <laughs> Jesus, you're flying through shit. All right, gotta, gotta hunt a little more. All right, red light. Red light means everything is empty. So now if you just press the button, you know, oops, open. That works. So yeah, defeated by, you know, a paper clip? Come on. Like, that's, you, you really don't get a lot of love from the buyer box from me. That's my rating system. It's my, my multiple star rating system is maybe even a little generous on this one, but you know, they, they made it out of metal. I mean, I guess it could have been, could have been wood. <laughs> so there's that. The last one we're going to talk about, and the last one we're going to play with a lot here, however, is the LockSafe product. This is, it feels the most robust. Like if you, if you crack a guy on the head with it, he's going to know it. The other ones, he'll just be like, fuck, asshole. Yeah, this is made of like thick steel. It's like quarter-inch plate steel. 
It has a really nice, you know, mechanism in it. It uses a cross lock as the override lock, which, you know, if you, act, if you flip up the little panel, you'll see not only is the cross key there, but the, the battery hookup is there. It's a nice design in case the battery dies. You can switch the battery with it locked. In general, though, I said, all right, they make, they, you know, they make cross picks. So maybe we can attack this. So I, you know, grab my Deal Extreme cross pick, put it in there, put it in there. There's no uh, footage of this happening because I just stopped rolling the camera. Uh, I was completely soundly defeated by the lock safe. <laughs> I was not able to open that at all. Um, if you would like to try, we're going to let you. We have a couple up here. We have some cross picks. We have some more booze and candy bars and stuff. There are, you know, I, I was surprised because usually cross locks are kind of weak. Usually if they're, you know, in a safe, um, they, like let's say a hotel safe, they're, they're not the best device. Usually you could like, you know, pick this, like this one was picked open. Sometimes you'll see even a cross lock that's made so strangely that it doesn't have a backer plate. It doesn't have a tail plate. And if you flip to the other side inside, you'll see this is a complete hole right through the keyway. Now, we're not going to get into a whole talk about electronic locks, but anytime you have a nice channel where you can stick something straight through to the inside of the safe and start pushing and pulling on wires and all kind of stuff, that's its own talk somewhere else about electronic safe spiking. But uh, yeah, definitely um, don't, don't, don't do that here. Who else wants to try the picking stuff? You want to come on up again if you want to try using the cross pick. If you've never used a cross pick, we'll try to show you how. But in general, if you can get it open, I'll be really impressed and I'll give you like two whiskey bottles. But since I could not pick the cross lock open, I said, well, is there another way? Well, the only other way to access what's in this safe is what? The fingerprint reader. Fingerprints are a really neat, you know, bio sort of technology that we see incorporated in a lot of computer devices and things like that. But I realized many of you might not know how the fingerprint readers actually work. There are actually two types. What can I do for you? Sharpie. Sharpie? Thank you. Yes. Can you fill my water? Thank you. Big, big hand for, you know, all my friends in Tool who helped me out and who showed up way too early to lug a bunch of safes around the hotel with me. So, yeah, fingerprint reading. Two kinds. There are optical readers that take a whole image of the finger all at once. And there are also, you know, you got, have anybody logged in with these before on a machine, maybe? All right, a couple of you have had those. There are also capacitance-based readers. They're a little more fun just in how they work. And as you're dragging your finger across them, the ridges and valleys of your finger change the actual magnetic, you know, electro, electro capacitance, and it's a, it's a neat little thing. In general, they both function by mapping what are called points of minutia. They do pattern matching. So if anyone, uh, if any, anybody know what points of minutia are? No? Fed, 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 you testify in court. <laughs> yes, so points of comparison, points of minutia, they are just places on your finger, and you know, the law enforcement community has been using this for a while, where unique identifiers can be found. So where arches come up, where two things bifurcate or come together, where there's a loop that's closed and a dot in the middle. There's all kind of different ways that different fingerprint analyzers will note these in their records. But in general, thank you. In general, all human fingers have plenty of them. And you can get really fancy with identifying all these little points of comparison. When someone says, you know, on a TV show, oh, we found an eight-point match, that's what this means. It means, well, there was a ridge up here, and there was a dot here, and there was a whorl here. And if you got enough of those, different people, different fingerprint, you know, forensics techs will be confident in saying this is this person. That's how all these devices work, too. These devices do not store an image of your finger anywhere in them. They don't have the ability to, like, oh, I use this fingerprint reader, and now my boss can, like, frame me for murder. No. These devices just store little bits of data about the different points of comparison. They store a matrix of points like this. So when you come by later, touch your finger or swipe your finger, the computer says, well, I just generated a new matrix. Does it match? It's really like a hashing function in a way. Your password is not stored on the server. Your hash is. It's the exact same thing. There's a lot of you know, myths about this in fiction, about how these work. There's a lot of bad tech in fiction. One of the biggest things in uh, you know, fictional shows that you sometimes get is the twin problem, right? That's not a twin problem. That's, that's awesome. But <laughs> no, there is the twin problem. Like, oh, it was actually his brother. And you know, that's why. Does anybody know why, why that's bullshit? Twins have different fingerprints. Do you know at what point in your life your fingerprints develop? Anybody? 
They develop prenatally in the womb, and they are pattern generated just by random eddies and currents in the amniotic fluid as your skin cells are generating. They form then, they are locked into you at that point, so if you, know, you cut them off, they should try to regrow mostly the way you had them. But even, you know, you could have septuplets or that friggin' Optimom who pupped out all those friggin' crotch fruits. They'll all be different. They'll all be different, so the twin thing, that's, that's all bullshit. I tried a lot of things to fuck with the fingerprint reader. I have a lot of, you know, people's fingerprints on file that we worked, you know, we, we did, all right, let's make some firearms ID card. We pulled out all of our old firearm paperwork at the office. We started trying to print copies of our fingerprints, because this is just an optical reader. So we said, all right, we, maybe we can just fake it out. Let's, you know, here's the, here's the left and right, and mirrored and not mirrored. We tried all kinds of ways. Nothing, this, this safe was having none of it. Yeah, we were not able to get, to get it to read. We were not able even half the time to get it to recognize that these were, you know, anything on the reader. So some of these devices you'll sometimes see advertised with life-sensing technology. This has something. So, you know, we said, all right, can we get it to work? It was working with my hand, was not working with anybody's copied fingerprint. I said, all right, you know, we do a lot of weird key copying stuff. If anyone's been in any of our black hat trainings where we do quick keying and such, we have this binary mold compound where you squish it together and you put it in a thing and you can, you know, sandwich a key in it. If you get someone's key for five minutes, you can copy it. It's a whole, come to our training at Black Hat. It's fucking blessed. This year we added safe cracking and shit. Can we convince your boss, man, you need that skill. <laughs> but yeah, I said, all right, well, when you're working on this stuff, you can easily make a ridge impression of keys. Maybe you could, you know, do it with a finger. I'd hope so. It looked like, oh, yeah, we, you know, hey, look, we made Tom's finger. Trying to make copies and using that to make gel impressions, it was not strong enough. I didn't think we were going to be able to make this work. But then I remembered, you know, my dad is a dentist, and I have access to all kind of weird stuff in his closet. So we just started getting every product that we could and trying to press our finger into it, pour other stuff into it. And in the end, we found all these different things, none of which fully worked. I said, all right, let's get this, you know, polyvinyl siloxone, I think is what you're seeing now. Finger works. I said, this one feels the most fleshy. It's the most springy, spongy. If anything's going to work, maybe this will be it. And nothing. Yes, applaud for the fail. Uh, yeah, we you know, did not want, didn't want to read again. We were like, fuck, man. I really wanted to have something to show for it. This is the biggest you know, safe. I wanted to bring it out to DEF CON and have people fuck around with it. Nope, wasn't going to read. And we were just about to give up and we said, all right, let's look at everything we've made. All of like, because, you know, this thing that we had made has a, another negative of all of our fingerprints in it. And it, so every time you keep stacking up, we said, well, we keep having more and more negative molds, technically. Put them all on the table and just get this stuff we found in a hobby shop. It's like this, I don't think it's uh, actually to make rubber stuff. It's supposed to be just a, a molding compound. It's very spongy. If you have, I have this little Pokemon widget thing and I'll put it in here and I pour the rubber around it, you can like spring it out and then use that to make additional knockoffs or whatever the heck you're doing with, you know, make Jenna Jameson sex vibrator dolls and things. It's the most lifelike fleshy stuff. I'm pretty sure it's what they use in the Vegas porn industry. Yes, we've conducted extensive research. So it's a binary compound. They said, all right, just pour it in a cup. A little bit of this, a little bit of the other. Mix it up really, really well, which I think we're going to start doing over there. If you guys try this, mix the shit out of this stuff. It will set a lot faster if you do. We'll tell you later. Come to the Q&A. We'll show, let you play with all the products and see what they are. But I said, all right, here's this other side of it. Very, very carefully measuring it. You know, I'm being you know, very scientific in my lab. My lab and my fireplace here. And I said, all right, we've got all of these little divots with all of our fingerprints in them. Let's just go right down the frickin' line and see what we can produce. Don't, don't drink that, it's bad. Somebody came by was in the office like, oh man, you're doing shots again? We're like, no. <laughs> no, that is, that is not whiskey, sir. Sorry? Are you saying, did the molds, uh, did they flip? No, we would make one mold and then we would cast on top of that. So we would have the, the correct, but we tried actually reversing it a couple of times, even with the, uh, just the copied versions. But here we are, we're just, you know, just bloop, bloop, bloop. 
and it's not nearly as nice or cool as the, the dental products and the alginates and the silicones, but it does set, you know, it's just a mess. It's kind of goopy. I hope we're not fucking up the stage too much. But it does kind of, you know, it sets eventually. It just takes a little while. And maybe some of this, we might have to do it in the Q&A room if we want to let it really, really harden up because if it doesn't, uh, if it just gets all, gets all over your face, it's like, you know, rolling around and having sex in pine trees. It does not come off you if it's not set. But we let this stuff set. We said, all right, you know, maybe we can get this thing to work. Let's see what'll happen. So, all right, here's test number one. Put it on the pad. Is it gonna read? And, yay! <laughs> and we weren't, you know, someone said, well, what was it seeing like through itself? Could it, could it read your finger on the other side of it? I said, no, I don't, I don't think so. You know, it's kind of, it's a little bit see-through, it's translucent, but just to be sure, you know, we tried somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, that was my other little freaking ha-K-O. We said, no, let's keep trying it. Let's mix it up. You like, try my fingerprint with your finger, and we kept getting pretty good results. My favorite result of all was this thing. This was the last one we had poured out of the end of like a long series of cups. You know, pouring out of cups, Mr. Balloon Hands. No, so, all right, you got this little thing. It was like a little tiny bit of rubber. And if you look at it, I think I even show you, it was full of air bubbles. It really doesn't cure very solid. And it's so wafer thin, I'm like, man, I don't know if we're going to really get like a ridge pattern out of this. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is going to work. I said, all right, well, just try it, man. See what you can get. So we had a couple of these little thin guys. Imagine this just being in your pocket at the right moment. You pull it out. You walk up to the, you know, super secure safe. You just kind of stick it on your hand. So Tom's going to go up to the safe and say, all right, I guess I got it here with my, my fake uh, spy fingerprint. Now let's see what happens. Do I get to access the firearms? Yay, I can has firearms. I, I love that so much because that's pretty much the only time in my life I think I'm ever going to feel like a spy, like James Bond, like, you know, one of the freaking Q-Lab gadgets. So, you know, in general, LockSafe is a nice product. It doesn't read without a hand on the fingerprint. It does have some sort of this life-sensing technology, which every vendor claims, but no one ever really explains. So I think it definitely needs more study. We need to know what's going on inside there that causes that. Maybe we can fake it out even more with like the licked gummy bear technique. But in general, in general I like it. In general it got kind of the highest rating out of me. If we couldn't uh, fake it out at all, like they have a new version, we had trouble enrolling new users in it. They have two different types of optical readers. Maybe the new version, if we keep playing with in the lockpick village, if we can't fake it out at all, I might like bump this up a little more. But do I, do I think it's a decent product? Kind of, you know? I really, I really like it. In general, if anyone's heard me talk before about guns, I don't think any of these are substitute at all for the, the most decent product, which is just, you know, having a nice, comprehensive, secure home and having kids who aren't fucking Nimrods watching MTV all day. <laughs> like, teach your goddamn kids, take them to the range, and you'll be safe without any of this. They do have new versions coming out from all these manufacturers. This is, you know, the Gun Vault Bio. It's just a compendium of more things. So we've got the pads and we have a little swipey and there's all kind of stuff always coming out. You guys know this security goes up one level, goes up another, goes up another. A lot of them are still relying on that, you know, tubular lock. I don't know why Chicago Lock Company made this product how many decades ago and it, people still think it's sexy and different. If you want to replace your tubular lock, you actually can. I like, I really like the micro vault because if you look inside, it's just, a, you know, the cam on the back is really simplistic. Take this whole thing out. I was actually able to disassemble it, pop the cam off, and just pick up an Abloy lock. Is Abloy a pretty good lock manufacturer? <laughs> yes. Come go. The security snobs guys are here. They're in the vendor area. Uh, they're friends of ours, full disclosure, Mitch and Han and those guys. But they'll let you play with some Abloy shit. That's, that's proper security. And I love that, you know, I found this old Abloy in a drawer, and I was like, well... The tailpiece is kind of the same and a little bit of effort with a Dremel and I can just kind of fit one thing on and the hardest part was getting the backspacing right. It's set a little too deep. I tried putting, you know, is that going to fit? I put a, like a, a, a nut on this side of it and then it pushed it too far. In the end, a couple turns of wire and I got a perfect backspacing. 
This can still trip the rear release bar. Everything anchors back in. And with you know, a few minutes of screwdriver time, you can actually turn one of these safes into kind of something nice. I mean, this is, this is something that I would probably rely on. This is something that maybe a bunch of us have all bolted into our trucks now under the seat. <laughs> You're going to comply with the law. Someone could crowbar it open, yes. But somebody who just kind of rolls up and says, oh, you know, we can you drive license and registration? Oh, is there anything in this vehicle? You know, a, a cop's not going to pick it open if they want to do an illicit search for improperly. A criminal is probably not going to be able to pick it open. So if somebody takes your gun, you, you're going you're gonna to know that happened. That's, you know, take, give, take it or leave it. But I think you can really mod a lot of this stuff up. Hack shit together yourself. Try it out. And you can usually make products that are better than anything you can buy in a store or online. And it's cool because you, you, know, you did it yourself. So I really encourage you guys to try this. I encourage you guys to play with this. Most of all, and I'll get, I always get a little soapboxy, I encourage you guys to you know, fucking play with your kids. I love seeing kids shooting. I love seeing kids tinkering with locks. How many people saw one of our RSOs at the DEF CON shoot, his, what was it, nine-year-old daughter? They had like matching hip holsters with spare mags and carry pieces, both just walking around. Like nothing. It wasn't fucking weird. A lot of people don't even take photos because they're like, whatever, it's just, you know, it's just kids having fun shooting. Do that. Bring your kids to DEF CON. Bring your kids to other cons. Bring your kids to a machine shop. Bring your kids to a gun range. Bring your kids to the Lockpick Village. <laughs> We'll take pretty good care of them here at this conference. But in general, I, I like seeing the next generation of hackers raised. I like seeing people learning this when they are young and carrying it through when they're older. Open. Open. Oh, my God. <laughs> fucking A. That was fucking perfect, man. <laughs> that couldn't have worked out better. I'm buying you, like, a big bottle or something. <laughs> Oh my God. Big hand again for, look at that shit. We didn't even do that ourselves. Damn. Perfect. We can do some questions after this, but in general, after you finish uh, patting that guy on the back and after we keep thanking all these guys, if, uh, how, how are they setting? Is it, is it setting up good yet? We're going to do it in the Q&A room. Come find us later and uh, keep control of your little, you know, fingerprint things. If you're a fingerprint person, follow us. We're going to try that later, see if the fingerprint's actually red. But in general, you know, don't, don't be afraid, A, of course, of firearms. Don't be afraid of shitty products, because if you test them yourself, you can often discover how they fail. You can discover how to make them better. But most of all, just, you know, keep, keep bringing the young ones around. I like seeing it. I don't know if they needed their own special room. I think they should just be walking everywhere. They should be seeing, you know, the freaking CTF, and they should be seeing strippers, and they should be seeing everything else that happens at DEF CON. But in general, uh, just, yeah, keep playing, keep playing, keep learning. Come by Lockpick Village, and thank you very, very much.